Okay, so for the actual mesh, we're mirroring the skin across. I want to keep things consistent because we've moved the mesh across, we've moved the rig across. It's all symmetrical, so we want the skin in to be symmetrical as well. So that way, the animator can copy the animation from the left to the left to the right. Now, you don't want things to be, you know, perfectly symmetrical when you have your animation. You want to have some sort of offset, but it's good to keep the rig consistent because we've mirrored the model. We want to mirror the rig, we want to mirror the skin in, so that way the animator has control so they can flip the animation perfectly and then have an offset if they want to. So for this, um, these antennas, we've been using the paint weights tool to try and you know get the skinning in there, but it's quite hard to get the skinning working perfectly. Um, for the mesh the paint skin weights tool is really good because it's sort of like an artistic thing, you know, painting it on the mesh. You can see visually its influence. But on these antenna controls, uh, we want more of a numerical input, you know, to get exact values. So to do this, um, I'm going to select the nerb surface, go to the paint weights tool, and I'm, I'm actually going to flood a value of 1 on every single one of these. So each joint has a value of 1, which overall will mean that each you know, influence the surface the same, so you won't really get much of a stretch. Now what I'm going to do, so basically I'm going to be taking the CVs and from the top down I'm going to assign a weight of 1 to the top and then 0.9 Point 0.8, point 0.7, point 0.6, you know, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and I'm going to do the inverse from the middle. It's going to start at point 0.1 and work its way up point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4. Oh, w sorry, um, do, the si do the same but the opposite. So it's going to start at 1, then point 0.9, point 0.8. So essentially, the top CVs will only follow the top joint. Then the second one down, these two here, will follow the top one 0.9 and the middle one 0.1 so they add up to a value of 1 but it's slowly falling off and then the same for the bottom down here so to do that I'm going to go Windows General Editors Component Editor and like we said earlier you know the component editors for the skin I'm going to go to options hide zero columns so I'm just dealing with the joints that we're worried about Okay, so in this component editor, I'll just go into the front view. Or we're already in it, and I'll set these top two CVs, and we're just going to manually input these values. So the, these, this top CVs here, and because it's a cubic curve, you're going to have these extra CVs at the end. So I'm just going to select all four, and I want them to follow the top which is the end. So it's got a value of 1 in there already because we flooded it all. So I'm just going to take the start and the mid and put a value of 0. So you can see it's going to float, fly straight to the top. So it's getting influenced 100% by that joint. And I'm just going to go through each one of these until we reach the middle. So the next one down is going to have a value of 0.9. The mid will have a value of 0.1. So you can see it's starting to fade off going to start to fade off of the top joint and starting to slowly fade onto the mid joint so we're getting a drop off of both of these and then the start joint because we you now flooded it I'm just going to put a value of zero, 0 the next two CVs so it was a value of 9 so it's now 0 0.8 0 0.2 and 0 next two CVs so 0 0.8 so 0.7 Point three, so it's always adding up to a value of one. So this, the drop off between these is, you know, evenly distributed. So point seven. Now we go to point eight. No, we don't. We're going down. So point seven goes to point six. So point six, point five, and now this is going to be sort of the mid point. And then we start to flip over to where the mid has more control, so 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16
point six point three point seven point two point eight zero that's point two now to point one point nine and zero. And then this last one um, is just the mid. So I'm going to put a value of zero in both of them. So you can see here I've done the I've already done this on the left antenna, but now you can see that the left and the right antennas, you know, they perfectly match up. So both of these uh, the controls for these I've isolated selected the surface and the joints but the controls for these are both stretched high up so this is when the antenna is stretched and you can see they're both distributing that stretch the same amount so now the animator will know that whatever it does to either of these controls is going to be the same on each side so they're going to expect the same results which is what they want and then if you know if they don't want it to match up they can do that themselves by subtly adding differences in the control curves and again we'll do the same to the bottom at these bottom CVs um, and we are wanting full influence on the start and none on the mid and the end so we're just doing it in reverse the start now has 0 0.9 the mid has 0 0.1 0 0.9 0 0.8 0 0.7 And again, just getting it so it adds up to one. Point seven, point six, and point five in all of these, and again zero in the top. And it starts to move over to the mid, so point four. Point three, point two, point one, and then zero. So the mid has full control over those mid joints. So we've got it evenly distributed. You can see all these CVs evenly spaced along. Now for this mid joint, because we've gone down in increments of you know point one, but there isn't actually ten uh, spans along here. Because we, when we create this, if you remember, we had twenty one joints, so twenty one spans, and we've actually done you know increments of ten down here and increments of ten, which is twenty. So we've, this middle bit is going to be a bit off because we haven't got a span that goes directly through this mid joint. So what we're going to do here is just go back to the paint weights tool, and I'm going to set it to replace, and we're going to replace with. So this CV CV for the bottom is a value of 0.1, and then it goes to 0.0 for the influence of the bottom joint, and the same for the top down. So what I'm actually going to do instead of 0.0, I'm going to go from point point zero I mean point one sorry to point zero five so it's still got a slight bit of influence. So switch the value to point zero five on replace on the start joint. It's gonna replace that. I'm gonna click it a few times to make sure it's done it. Again we could switch to the solid brush to get that straight in there. So make sure I'm replacing it with that value. The same with the top, the end joint. I'm going to do that to the opposite side. Replace that. So we're going down from you know one to point nine eight seven six five, so to point one and then to point zero five. And then essentially that means in the middle here it would be zero.
Okay, so there you can see it's perfect on both sides. It's been mapped across perfectly. Uh, so now if I just show everything, and again, as I said, the eyes were stretched, so I could see the stretch as it was going along, as I was skinning it. So now if I move these out towards the front, you can see that we've mirrored the ribbon skinning across, we've mirrored the actual geometry skinning, so now we can actually see you know the wireframe is perfectly matched which is what we want, the we want the animator to expect that if he moves these two controls out at the same time you know both antennas are going to be perfectly moved out at the same time as well and then you know as he's animating this he'll add a slight offset to make it look uneven so more natural but for the actual rigging we want him to know well he or she to know that it's going to be matched across and also if we check the tangents we can see by you know spending that extra time skinning we're getting this really nice fall off this direct curve and if we don't want it as angular again we can change the tangent so we can get it from really sharp to really smooth so just spending a bit of time you know it might have been a bit tedious setting the values manually in the component editor but you can see that that's paid off from these really nice uh, deformations. So, and again, if we spent the time rigging, you know, spent the time setting up these ribbon spines, before we start animating, we want to spend a decent amount of time getting the skinning correct. Because if we've done a good rig, if we do a good skinning, that rig's going to go straight through to the animation, and the, the animator will have a lot more control. and again this means now these are evenly spaced we can show off the sine wave again we can see that those sine waves are a lot more evenly spaced again so just by getting the skin in to evenly distribute before we had it sort of clumped in the middle it's evenly distributed throughout the whole antenna so now as we do these sine waves you can see it's it's applying that from the start to the finish instead of just clumping it in the middle so just spending a bit of time skinning means we can just get some really nice um, animation in there And again, because we've done these at the same time, done everything the same, we can see here that the signs are working together now. We can get these, so we'll just hide the nerve surfaces. See, if the animator was expecting to animate the sine wave, you know, he knows it's, he or she knows it's going to be even on both sides. There's no offset, so we get this nice, smooth curve all the way down. If we'd have introduced a few, you know, a bit of errors here and there, you know, few offsets like the skin weights weren't mirrored properly from the ribbons you know you might get some some clipping here and the sine waves might not be matching up perfectly so then the animator would you know the animation wouldn't work the animator would probably have to animate counter animate some of these controls so just spending a bit of time getting it getting it perfect means I'm gonna save a lot of time in the animation that's looking cool Okay, and one last thing we can actually do here is I'm going to select these two controls again and go edit, add attribute, and I'm just going to add an attribute called sine rotate. Actually, I call it sine twist. And just click add. We're not going to have a minimum, maximum, or default. And all I'm going to do is bring up the windows, general editors, connection editor and I'm actually going to get this sign here so if you can't select it remember to change the 
selection mask. So if I was to rotate this, you can see how now we we are applying the sign. You know, instead of from left to right, doing it forward and backwards. So again, thinking outside the box, keep thinking about ways you can improve the rig. So this is a rotate Y of the sign. So I can basically just take that sign twist and put it into the rotate Y. Do the same for the other side. Select the control. Take the sign, reload right. Sign twist. And put it into the rotate Y. And there's more more functionality you could add here. You could, you know, add a scale control in here. So just by manipulating this um, non-linear deformer, you can get a lot of functionality out of there. But I'm quite happy with just having these two with the sign and having the sign twist in there. So you can see the sign twist. So I'll rotate it 90 degrees, and we can get that. Offset in there. And again, looking from the side view, these are going to be perfectly mirrored across. Okay, cool. Okay, so it's looking funky. And you can see how how large these antennas are now. Adding those edge loops in, adding those joints, and you know setting up these sine waves has really paid off for the amount that we can do with this rig with little effort from the animator. You know they've just got to select these controls and just set a few values so they don't have to you know they don't have millions of controls down here that they've got to move about and then keyframe each individual control so keeping it as simple as possible can give us quite complex results but still give us really simple controls to control it 